All right, the last example. Given the function f of x equals x minus 6 divided by 2, we want to graph the function and its inverse on the same set of axes. So we could actually find the inverse graphically, but let's actually first start by graphing this. And some of the things that came up in the conversations were this 2, okay, is dividing into both. So if you wanted to find the slope and the y-intercept, f of x equals, you could divide both by 2. So we'd have x divided by 2 minus 6 divided by 2. What's 6 divided by 2? It's 3. This is actually the same thing as 1 half x minus 3 because you have 1 in the numerator. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. So what's the slope? And what's the y-intercept? So if I start by plotting the y-intercept, which is 0, negative 3, I rise 1, I run 2. That's a slope of 1 half, right? Rise 1, run 2, rise 1, run 2, rise 1, run 2. Am I doing this right, you guys? Okay. I need you to pay attention to my mistakes. See if I make mistakes. So after I've plotted a bunch of points, I could also go down 1, back 2, down 1, back 2. I'm going to draw my line. Now, we could find the inverse graphically by just swapping our x and y values. That's what we were talking about before. But let's go ahead and find the inverse algebraically, and then we'll see if that works um, for graphing purposes. Okay, so to find the inverse algebraically, what's the very first step? Replace the f of x with y. y equals x minus 6 divided by 2. What's the next step? Switch the x and the y. So I get x equals y minus 6 divided by 2. Now, one thing to realize is this whole thing here is being divided by 2. So I could have started with, you know, this other version where I had it in slope y-intercept form. I would get the same thing. But one thing to realize here is if I want to get rid of divide by 2, right now both of these things are being divided by 2. So what's the opposite of dividing by 2? If I multiply both sides by 2, here they cancel, and that's because otherwise I would have had to distribute, you know, that, that divide by 2 would distribute into both. So I get 2x equals y minus 6, and now what? Add 6 to both sides, I get 2x plus 6 equals y, and then remember my last step is to write that as the inverse. So the f inverse, that's what this negative 1 means. By the way, it doesn't mean the reciprocal. It just is a notation right now for the inverse. In, in the past, if we took x to the negative 1, we, we just flipped that. But this right here is denoting the inverse is 2x plus 6. So let's go ahead and graph that. What's the slope? And what's the y-intercept? OK, so 0, 6. The slope is 2. Rise 2, run 1. Rise negative 2, run negative 1. 2, negative. And so then we can use our ruler. Okay. Now, interesting to notice when they meet, these points have to be the same, right? Negative 6, negative 6, because if I swap negative 6, negative 6, I get the same exact thing. And remember that these are symmet these are um, a mirror image around the line 1, 1, 1, 1, y equals x. So anyway, just showing that as well. Here's y equals x, and you can see that there's, what do we call that when we flip it over? A reflection, that's right, a reflection over the line y equals x. Okay, now one thing that students often forget to do, and I really do want to see you do this for points too, is your check. 
So you're going to take the very first one is verify that f and f inverse of x are inverses by showing the composition. So the composition and, and in math means both. So I'm going to do it both ways. So I'm going to take the inverse function, which is here, and I'm going to plug it in for x in the original function. So I get 2x plus 6 minus 6 over 2. Some of you were using parentheses here to show that you're plugging that whole thing for x, and that's totally fine. The thing is, there's nothing that needs to distribute. So you don't technically need those parentheses there, but it can be helpful to see that you replaced all of f inverse in for x in the composition. But what it would simplify in the numerator here? The sixes, right? So you get 2x over 2, and that simplifies down to x. In some ways, this was even easier than doing it with the numbers, wasn't it? Now if we want to do it this way, f, oh wait, that's the way I just did it. Okay, let's do it the opposite way. <laughs> f inverse of f of x. I'm going to take f of x, which is this whole thing, and I'm going to plug it now in for x. So I get x minus 6 over 2. That was the original function. This whole thing times 2 plus 6. Okay, so how do we simplify this part? Sorry, my 2 is below the equal sign. It's basically a, a whole number 2. So do you see that 2 divided by 2, what happens to them? They would undo. Okay, if you didn't believe me, you could distribute the 2. You could go 2x minus 12 divided by 2 plus 6. You see how if I divide both of those into 2, what do I get? x minus 6 plus 6 is equal to x. Okay, so for both of them, they worked out. And the reason why you want to do that is because if you miss a step or if you make a mistake, and then if you don't verify it, then how do you know that you really have found the inverse? Okay?